Jeremy Sampson is one of South Africa's leading rock climbers. He has been climbing for more than half his life and looks more comfortable on an exposed rock face than anywhere else. When he is at home in Cape Town, one of his favorite places to climb is on Table Mountain. But Jeremy really aspires to getting out into remote places and trying adventurous climbs. For the past five years, I've had this dream of climbing this perfect route that rises out of the Namib Desert. The route is called In Excess, and it's on a mountain in the middle of Namibia called Spitzkop. Rising to nearly 1,800 meters above sea level, the climb follows a blank brown water streak up the southwest face of the mountain. Because of the dangers and difficulties, there have only been two ascents of the route. It's got a serious reputation. The one thing that Jeremy's been missing all along is the perfect climbing partner. Someone completely dedicated to the cause. Someone who is all or nothing. Justin Hawkins is an incredibly powerful climber. Although he seldom climbs long routes out in the mountains, he is extremely competent. Justin has competed in sport climbing competitions all around the world. I mean, definitely the reason why I climb is for the movement. It's that's something that gives me enjoyment. Whether it's any type of climbing, I mean, it's and I find that with sport climbing you can push yourself harder. I mean, it is purely just the movement. Justin's forte is climbing extremely hard, short routes at a very high grade. <coughs> He's not really that familiar with being out in remote areas trying longer routes. But having said that, I think Justin is able to pull it off because he's, he's often climbing below a level lower than what he's accustomed to climbing. Yeah, the thing about climbing with Justin, which I really enjoy, is the whole focus on your outing is having a good time. Both Jeremy and Justin are used to climbing steep, hard routes. Normally there are good handholds, but in excess is slab climbing, which is a completely different thing. So they'll need to put in some friction training. I got really psyched when Jamie asked me to try and climb in excess of him because uh, I knew it would be a very big project for me. It doesn't have big handholds, it's all friction climbing. For me it was like starting out from the beginning again. I had to relearn the whole technique because it's just, I'm used to climbing over hanging things and with slab climbing it's so much on your feet and your body position. As though you can be as confident as you want, if you slip, you slip, and it can, it's irrespective of your ability. It's just like one continuous slab for like half a kilometer, and it's desperately hard, and the holds are really small, and your feet start burning, and your fingertips get trashed. It's not a nice thing to be doing on your holiday. If there were like three people in an aeroplane, and two parachutes, Justin would take both of them. <laughs> in terms of slab climbing, I've had no experience, and so it was really good training. I mean, Jeremy helped me a lot with my slab climbing because it is, I mean, it is a confidence game and it is a technique thing. I, mean, I do most of the climbing in the, in the relationship. This is our hero purple. This is a lump of granite. As you can see, instead of like sandstone, it has a much rougher appearance. You get these feldspar, these sharp quartzitic crystals that extrude from the granite, giving it a rough cheese grater-like appearance. It's also not as steep as sandstone, so instead of falling away from the rock, you'll scrape against it as you fall off, much like this pawpaw. It's all to do with familiarity. If you've been in a situation before that you're familiar with, you can reduce the fear level to a manageable level. Tricky, eh? <laughs> you don't want to fall off like the last move. This is Africa, and this is the equator. This is the Tropic of Capricorn. And here is Namibia. And here, in the heart of the Namib Desert, is Spitzkop. Well, you better go shopping.
Do you have any passes? Yes, I tried on the end. <laughs> Here we are at the Tropic of Capricorn. So named yes. for the tropical environment <laughs> and the cornfields. The journey seemed to go really quickly considering it's 2,000 kilometers from Cape Town. <laughs> When I first saw Spiscop, I was completely blown away. It's, it's just this massive granite spike sticking out of this flat desert. You get these beautiful sunsets with these long shadows. It's an amazing place. Look, Ben, ducks. <laughs> oh my God, that looks far. Having come here now and seen it again, I think I'm feeling more confident. I think it should be fine. I can't see any bolts. Well, then there's no point in looking further. Give me back the, give me the binoculars. Jeremy and Justin were going to have to be patient on the first day. The logistics of the climb and the filming had to be sorted out first. Judging by the respective piles of equipment, the filming looked like it might be more hard work than the climbing. We, the fresh air crew, were going to have to rig 500 meters of fixed lines so that we could get good camera positions and follow the climb the next day. This bitch you just shoot from the right here. You can move a hell of a long way over. The climbers kept their distance so that the route would all be new to them. In excess follows the most blank line up the face and some of the bolts up to 12 meters apart. It's definitely the long runouts between the bolts that give it the serious yeah. reputation. The route was first climbed in 1991 by Mike Cartwright, Kevin Smith and Martin Seegers. It took them many trips to the mountain, six months of hard work and two broken ankles to finally complete the route. It's 13 pitches, about grade 25, and it was an incredible achievement. It's consistently hard from bottom to top. I've only been above 50 metres once before, so I mean, it's going to be high. Jeremy just likes people getting scared. He likes to be there watching people <laughs> getting scared. scared. No, you'll be fine. Always. Fine. No, it's your type of climbing. You're easy. Yeah, you lead this pitch. This is the easy <laughs> one. And I'll get up there and it'll be oh. a five meter run out and I'll be crying. <laughs> I mean, it does stand out as like the most striking feature of the wall, I think. And it's definitely the route that would be the most challenging to do for us anywhere on that wall. No, too much cheese. We're only on the cheese. I think that's what's going to happen to you when you fall. You're going to land like a cheese on the cheese grater. If we do fail on this route, I mean, we will be disappointed because we have come here to do the route. But we won't go away unhappy. I mean, we, we're going to have a good time on the route anyway. Part of my daily ritual for the last decade. Justin, you ready to go? Mm. <laughs> Justin, coffee. He doesn't get going in the morning very easily. Can you chuck me a rust, please?
it's had hardly any um, any ascents and it's actually had quite a number of attempts. It's got a reputation amongst climbers of being a very sparsely vaulted, serious route and I think that that aspect of it is actually quite an attraction. I'm quite sort of anxious, I want to kind of get going, it looks, looks cool, I want to get up there. We pulled straws last night, I got the short straw, so I get to do the first lead. And then, uh, yeah, I'm glad about that, this first lead looks easy, so it's nice just to get into it. Now I reckon if it's, if it's uh, 9 o'clock now, I'm expecting a bit more than half an hour pitch. So we will get to the top at the earliest at about 3 or 4. So it's going to be quite warm. What you eating? Protein. <laughs> it's going to be a big, big thing, I think. Definitely. I mean, I know if we repeat this thing, it'll be probably one of the biggest achievements in my climbing career. We can help each other quite, quite a lot, I think, and that's important on this kind of route because, you know, you can start losing focus or start tiring out, and it's important to have someone there who's, who doesn't piss you off. This is my rope. The umbilical cord, as you would say. The fine line between dying and living. I don't know if these will work. It's what the first couple of pitches are for, to try out all the different techniques. You see, I've got my tape on my hands. Basically, if we fall, I figure it's going to be something like... And the elbow pads are going to slip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all this protective clothing is my mate, Justin, and I can't... I can't believe I'm climbing with such a dork. <laughs> Who's your daddy, eh? This baby's coming home safe and sound. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. One small step for man, one giant climb for mankind. Somebody. Yeah. Oh, my shoes are sore. I think we will do it. Because, yeah, I mean, you have to... I mean, there's no point in approaching it with a maybe. To me, in excess is a big challenge just because it's in a remote place and it's hardly had any repeats of it. I mean, a lot of people have failed on the route just because, I mean, it's just so out there and it's so long and the bolts are so far apart. You are watching me, eh? I'm gripped on one of your casual below. I know that's how Jeremy approaches things. He, you kind of just get cocky with the rock and just start saying like, you know, I'm better than you. And I think that's, that, that's the way you overdo it. You can't arrive there being scared from the beginning, I don't think. I believe I'm here. Woo! I mean, it's two down. About 10 to go. I'm really feet. I'm, I'm in agony. <laughs> it's, it's in the shade and it's only a second pitch and it's the easiest climbing as well. This isn't a very good sign. Yeah. You're on belay, you can climb and you're ready. This is where it starts getting hard now, I think. I wasn't feeling good at all anywhere on that route. There are like way bigger holes over there. <laughs> Got it. Got it. I'm anything but relaxed right now. <laughs> this is desperate. Shit. After I fell off, I was definitely quite a bit shaken, but I uh, started the pitch again and basically just carried on climbing to the top. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to be here.
Fucking hell, dude. This is, I don't know where to go. I think I see a handle. Justin was suddenly facing falls of up to 10 meters and the holes were getting smaller and smaller. I am going to die. Well, actually, hang on, because I don't know what the to do here. Just climb, keep got climbing. Got a five meter run out and there are no fucking holes. Relax. <sighs> One more move and you're there. <clears throat> That's it. Nice, Justin. Good. Oh my god. That was one of the most scariest. Life threatening things I've ever done. You know, look how long it is. That means nothing. Okay, I'm safe. I think it's gonna be very hard and very scary. I really, at some point, I don't think I could do it. I mean, if it's any harder than that, it's fine. I'm going to be cut. We're going to be fun. This pitch looks nice. This is insane, Jeremy. On the fourth rope length, or pitch, things were going along quite well, but the most difficult and dangerous climbing was still to come. Watch yourself. It's quite crumbly here. You gotta not think about the fact that you're gonna wing off and just climb. Where are you gonna end up? Justin, I wonder how Spitzkopf has formed. Well, Jeremy, the supercontinent of Gondwana land broke up into six continents. This magmatic phase ended about 100 million years ago. Since then, the layer around Spitzkopf has gradually been lowered. In fact, it used to be as much as a kilometer higher. This so called lowering of the surface around Spitzkopf forms what we call Inselberg forming. And that is how Spitzkopf was created. Uh, now I think the actual real fun is going to start. Now we're in the sun. And now uh, we've got some run out. And now there's a bit of exposure. It's going to be quite fun. How are your fingers doing, eh? Your fingers, it's not actually, they don't take too much. Not as bad as I thought, but the, mm. it's your feet. It's going to stand up on your feet. You won't you above it, it's fine. Mm. It's got to hang loose, relax, you know. It's fun. No, I don't like getting scared. <laughs> Well, that's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find it too nerve wracking so far, but I think I'm gonna get gripped now on this pitch. Go, Jerry. This is the pitch that Martin broke his ankle on or something. All these high steps freak you out. Watch Justin, watch me very well. I'm watching you very well, Jeremy. The top of the pitch. I'm gonna try go on. I'm taking a bit of strain, Justin. Go, Jamie. Come on. Ah, it's hard. One of Jeremy's dreams on the climb was to link two of the hardest pitches into one. Watch. Ford here would be really serious. <laughs> By completing this lead, he probably upped the overall grade of the route. It was an awesome bit of climbing. Justin, off below. If it had been like one move more of hard climbing, I would have been out of there. Jeremy's just linked both pitches, uh, both 24s. So I don't know how hard that makes the full pitch, the, uh, the linked version. But it's, yeah? It's, it's impressive. <laughs> There's a stage where you just, you can't relax. You never get more than just the tiniest little crimp on your, on your hands. How the hell did you do this first move? Come on, Justin. This is the first time I've slipped, and I don't think it was in the most difficult place. Just 
try to quickly get my foot onto a hole. Here comes a pole. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Pole. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> How are you feeling? Mentally, you just drained. I mean, I, I really found that at the stages when I reached the pitch, I just, I just was so tired of being scared that I just, I didn't, I really just didn't want to just yeah. see fear again. I just wanted to have fun and relax. No, it's not that hard. It is. It looks absolutely desperate. Yeah. See, I don't know where to go. There's that section there. Yeah, and then step out left, I reckon. Yeah, but let me, why don't just that, put a bolt in here? Ram, and then diagonally left to that bolt. You'll be fine, Justin. No. Uh -uh. Are you gonna go for this? No, 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 you Please, do. Jeremy, I'm begging you. I won't be able to do that. Why not? Because it's too far out for me. And I'm gonna die. And I can't stop my legs from shaking. I think my gearbox is broken. <laughs> I can't see myself putting my shoes back on again and getting scared. It's not over yet. This is the pitch that a chap called the British guy called Don broke his leg. Oh, didn't break his leg. Took a chunk of skin out of his hand on. The temptation is to think that it's over. I think it's, it's quite a lot still ahead of it. That's good, you stay there. You know, That's what friends are for. You've got to help me with something, Justin, even if it's putting my boots on. Okay, climbing. It's also got that slippery kind of glassy feel about it. On the last of the hard pitches, the runouts, or distance between the bolts, was up to 12 meters. A mistake now would mean a monster fall. Oh, thin. Really, really thin. <laughs> he falls. That's not going to be nice. Fall now, I break something. Definitely. The combination of sore feet, desperate exposure, and continuously hard climbing was taking its toll. But with 30 meters of hard climbing to go, the job was nearly done. Watch me. That was desperate. Shut that run out far. Nice one. That's my boy. But that was that was really Ooh. scary. Good job. <laughs> With the difficult climbing done, it was now a formality for Jeremy and Justin to complete the route and fulfill one of their dreams. It's kind of an intense enjoyment that you get and a sense of performance when you've done something that is very difficult. Oh, I'm drained, I can't just, I can't do any more of this. No. Some of the pitches up there, he was facing some big falls. I learned a lot, and it was so much fun climbing with him. I like the aspect of going out and having an adventure, having had a really rewarding experience, and often if you're frightened, it just enhances the experience so much more. The friendships that you get climbing, especially when you are in extreme positions together, I find they're cemented far better than the normal friendships you get in your normal doing dealings. Climbing friendships tend to last and it's a very important part of climbing. It, and it was a really memorable experience climbing with Jeremy. I mean, he climbed it really well and we had a good day out.
Dude, where's my scooter? 